Hello, Jazz After Dark people. How we doing out there? Huh? Everything good? I hope you had a great weekend. You ready to hang with me? We're talking about four retirement planning mistakes that you either will you regret because you've done it or you will regret. Brought to you by uh, Flaviar. Our, it's not really a sponsor, but if you want to test it out, have, save some money on it, you can. Uh, we will be sampling tonight Bushmills 16-year-old single malt whiskey notes of sherry. Oh, I'm excited. Green apple, almonds, and a little port. Uh, I believe I have had this in the past. Speaking of the past, you know, when it comes to any kind of retirement goal or plan or anything, um, the past you can't change, right? We all wish we could go back in time and start over, especially especially me, right? If you just watch because you think it's fun to watch, that's one thing. I live this stuff every day. I watch people that have started earlier and have amassed more. I should say not amassed more so much, but have come closer to their goals than I have to mine, you know? And so uh, we all wish we could go back in time. If we could go back in time, some of us still would have messed it up. I know for a fact I would have. I did a video about it where I talked about the biggest loss ever in my life. And I went through it step by step. This was the stock. This was how much money I put into it. This was my goals and intention. And here's how I blew it. I know for a fact that I wouldn't have been able to hold on to that money anyways. I'd have screwed it up for reason number one. Nobody was helping me. Nobody was giving me advice. There was nobody in my corner that wasn't trying to sell me something. That's what we do here. We're just advisors, straight up fiduciary advisors that focus on growing your money. In full transparency, we only make more if you make more. We're just tagging along for the ride. If we can get you there, we'd like to make a few bucks off that as well. And some people disagree with that and that's okay. Uh, but other people go, that's a fair trade, right? If I'm gonna make 2% more and I gotta give this guy a half a percent, okay, that's fine, right? So having somebody on your side with your, whatever it is you're shooting for, your retirement goals, your investment goals, general wealth building goals, Let's not make it boring now, but let's focus on what that is. Having somebody on your side is huge. That's tip number one. Uh, tip number two, that person or you, if you're going to DIY it, you should have a plan. And that's the most boring thing to say, right? Have a plan. Uh, it's obvious. Look up any financial advisor on YouTube or whatever. And they go, that plan is so stinking important. Gosh, darn it. Um, it's true. But when it comes to making that plan, be specific, right? Uh, Anything you do, you're supposed to have a plan, right? You, you're going to start a business. Uh, maybe you're a pilot. Right? You got to have a, a, you know, see the far aim back there. Uh, maybe you got to have a plan for that. You should anyways, right? It's, it is in the book. It tells you you're supposed to do that. Um, it could be anything, right? Uh, making dinner at night, you have a plan. When we don't, you ever notice how you get a little off track there? I, I've done it. I've totally done it there. But one of the tips I want to give you for that is... Don't set it in stone. And I think that's obvious, but don't set it in stone because your life is guaranteed to change. Guaranteed to change. My whole life plan changed from the moment I started jazz and then it's changed 10 times since then, but I can change the plan. I use nest egg. We can go in there. We can actually adjust things, amend things. Can I afford it? Can I not do it? Does it screw up anything else I'm trying to do? And, uh, you know, focus on that. Let's get down to some of the nitty gritty here. Um, tip number three. The timing of your retirement is everything. But to you, it's just an age that you think you'd like to quit working. Think about that for a second. Well, I try the Bushmills single, mm, 16 years single malt. Your retirement age may not be up to you. You ever think of that? If you say I'm going to retire at 60, I give that a, a 72, by the way. It is, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Not my favorite. Um, if you say, I want to retire at 60, let's say 62. Well, what if you end up with more money if you retire at 61? What if because you retiring at 62, 63, 64, start screwing with things that have to do with retirement? Maybe your Irma surcharge for you is just not worth it. That's a silly uh, 
example to give, but maybe that pops up. Maybe the taxes you're going to pay on Social Security start becoming an issue to where you have less dollars at the end of your you know, retirement or through retirement than you would have if you would just pulled the plug a little bit earlier. Maybe there are certain pensions you need to take advantage of. The, the, the percentage increase is going down. And if you retire now, you'd actually end up with more dollars. So retiring, it's, you know, it's nice to have an age, but then when you go backwards a step and you put a plan to it, that age should change. It may not be perfect. Any advisor that says, oh, you want to retire at 63? I'll make it happen. They're, they're doing the bare minimum. And maybe that's enough for you at the moment, but they're doing the bare minimum to say, thumbs up, you can retire at 63. The next 2023, like next level question is, is that the best age for me to retire? Like I'm willing to work another eight months to get me to 64. Would I end up with more money? Obviously there's a little bit there because you delayed it, but would it be significant? Is it more efficient to do that? So think about that as well. Your retirement age is not necessarily about your age that you have in your head. I have seen that so many times and that's shocking to people. Um, and it's obviously usually telling them, you know, retire earlier and you'll have more money. If you love your job and you want to keep working, that's fine. Just realize you're not going to have as much money as if you were to pull the plug, you know, a year and a half earlier. So think about that one. You'll find it in the plan too. When you're developing your plan, if you're really geeky, you'll see it. And your final tip for the evening is, um, I've said it before. What portion of your net worth takes real risk and what portion of your net worth sort of floats around and stays safe? What portion of your net worth is sacrificial, meaning at no point in time will you take any level of risk with that? You got to break it down like that. See, it's tough because we, when you're 30, 40, yeah, 50 ish, somewhere in there, depending on your retirement, you know, age, you're like, why am I slowing down? I can take as much risk as I want. Statistically, I can afford the next market downturn. I'll recover by the time I want to retire. So if I'm 40 years old, I don't want to slow anything down. Well, you're used to that. When you get a little older, I can tell you, I can't relate, but I can tell you that there are dollars you've got to keep safe in there. And last year was a great example for that. Imagine if you were thick into retirement and last year comes along and you need to withdraw $80,000 from your account. The only problem is that $80,000 just turned into $62,000 because of the downturn. Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't feel good. Oh, and by the way, that 62,000 because of inflation has the spending power of 57,000. So all of a sudden $80,000 in what you perceive to be today's dollars turned into 57. Um, those are real things that happen that I think a lot of advisors don't throw out there. Put, they put that nugget of information out there. I think they just try to, I don't know, talk you into doing plans or, I don't know what they do. So anyways, hope that helps you there, right? Think of the, uh, the concept of putting a plan together, then making sure your retirement age is the most efficient age. Most people don't care if they retire right at 62 or 60 or 55 or 70 or what most people don't care. They just want to know they're doing it right. So put that plan together and make sure as you're putting that plan together, if you're going to get help, take the, put the extra step in there. What was the question I taught you last week? When that person says, here is your plan or here's what I want to do, ask one simple question. Just go one step further and say, is there anything about this that could be done better that I just don't, I'm not smart enough to ask? Ask them that. Is there, are we sure that there's nothing else I can do in my plan? And if the answer is, what do you mean? You're successful with this. What do you mean? No, there's always something. There's one extra layer there. And now that I've said that, I guarantee you clients will ask me that. That's why I do this, right? If I just sat and played golf every day and people didn't know what questions to ask, it sounds like a pretty cushy life there. But if I can get you to ask questions, maybe it's something I forgot about. We're all human too. Maybe, maybe I just was thinking you said something. And so I was trying to cater for you to have this you know, repair shop when you're older and do all this. And maybe I missed that part about your legacy giving and just forgot all about it. Ask that question. Is there one extra thing we can do to make this more efficient or better in my favor? That's it. And uh, finally, taking risk. Take risk where you're supposed to. Don't look at the stock market. Too many clients have done this. They say, I want to be out of the stock market. You're left in the dust. I have one client in particular who doesn't really watch anymore, but he's still a client. He literally got out on October 13th. And he said, it's okay if I say his name, but I won't. But uh, he got out on October 13th. Does anybody know what October 13th was? 
it officially, as of now, was the bottom in the stock market, left in the dust. So careful what you do there. Take risk where you have to. Protect the dollars that you don't want to uh, risk. All right, I'll wrap it up there. Enjoy, and thank you for following Jazz After Dark. Our Bush Mills here gets a 72. Uh, not my favorite. But then again, I'm I just kind of not in the mood to drink tonight. You know what I mean? I'm kind of feeling water tonight, but uh, it's not amazing. Other than that, the rest of them have been uh, at Flaviar there. We have, a, a, I guess, a deal with them where you can get a discount on that. Uh, it's been pretty cool. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you tomorrow evening. Adios.